It's uh, commission presentation of the amend that, uh, amending regulation on classification, labeling, and packaging of substances and mixture. So uh, we have first uh, uh, commission for 10 minutes, Mr. Aurel Ciobanu Dorda from DGM. First, and then I understand also Mr. Hans Ingel. So you have 10 minutes both. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, good afternoon to you and to the honorable members uh, of this, uh, uh, of this uh, committee. Uh, thank you for inviting us uh, to present the Commission proposal for amending the CLP regulation, and uh, thank you for uh, taking uh, relatively quickly a keen interest. I see also the rapporteur uh, here, a keen interest in this uh, uh, file so that it uh, advances uh, resolutely. This revision of the CLP regulation is happening in the context of uh, the implementation of the chemical strategy for sustainability, which in turn is a deliverable of the European Green Deal. And actually this uh, proposal for amending the CLP uh, regulation is one of the flagships uh, of the implementation of the uh, strategy. <coughs> this strategy one of its main building blocks is strengthening chemical legislation with the overall aim of moving to a toxic-free uh, environment and enhancing the protection of human health and the environment. And at the same time, our legislation aims to secure European competitive advantages of the chemical industry for the chemical industry and to promote innovation to safer and more sustainable chemicals. We also aim for simplifying and streamlining the regulatory processes, and we want to reduce the burden notably for uh, SMEs. We will first explain what the CLP regulation is and does, and then how it is being amended and uh, why. This uh, regulation is one of the cornerstones of the chemicals legislation, as it allows the identification of hazard properties of products. Such identification is then used in other pieces uh, of legislation, by other pieces of legislation, for regulatory actions, pesticides, biocides, cosmetics, uh, ecolabels. CLP regulation also allows the assessment and classification of chemicals and how these must be communicated to consumers and workers. Further, it provides simple risk management measures on how hazardous products should be handled, for example, wearing gloves for a corrosive uh, product, and so on. CLP is the EU implementation of rules adopted in the uh, UN uh, framework called the, globally, the Global Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals. Its purpose is protection of health and environment, but also the free movement and trade of uh, chemicals. It is important to know that it is up to companies themselves to assess the harmful properties of the substances and mixtures they place on the market based on the CLP criteria. The company must then classify the substance or mixture and communicate these hazards to others in the supply chain via safety data sheets and to consumers via labels. However, for some critical hazard effects like carcinogens or endocrine disruptors, priority is given to harmonized classification. With all these provisions, CLP regulation ensure the well-functioning single market for chemicals and the high level of protection since 2008. So, one may wonder, why did uh, we have to revise this uh, regulation? First of all, <coughs> we, uh, the chemical strategy called for the reinforcement of this regulation as a EU cornerstone for regulating chemicals. Hence, we took a step back to assess where the regulation worked well and where improvements were necessary. Our analysis showed that the CLP regulation should be updated to take account of scientific and technological progress and of market developments such as online sales, digital labeling, and refilling stations for chemicals. The revision will ensure more information about chemical hazards is identified and communicated while simplifying certain labeling obligations. 
First, let us clarify that the revision of the CLP regulation resulted in the adoption of two acts. A legislative proposal, which is now in front uh, of you, and the Commission delegated uh, regulation, which was adopted at the same uh, time. We introduced the much needed new hazard classes for endocrine disruptors and for chemicals with long lasting effects in the environment via the delegated regulation to ensure a proper implementation of the one substance, one assessment approach, which was also proposed by the Chemical Strategy for Sustainability. That regulation is the outcome of uh, this proposal for uh, a, delegation, a delegated regulation, is the outcome of multiple in-depth discussions with a broad spectrum of scientific experts. We wish to thank the members of this committee for their agreement with the text that will be published soon of that uh, regulation. Uh, now I would like to pass the floor to my uh, colleague uh, Hans, representing uh, DG Grow. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, honorable members. Um, thank you for, um, for um, allowing this presentation. First of all, let me apologize for my director, Christian Schreiber, who couldn't come for, due to health problems. Now, as Aurel already explained, um, the family of EU chemicals legislation is a broad family, but it has two parents. One parent is REACH, another parent is CLP. Now, these parents are getting older a bit, and so it's time to rejuvenate them um, and to send them somehow a bit to the fitness. And this is what, exactly what we're doing with this proposal. So one of the parents is CLP. With CLP and with this specific amendment, we're trying to achieve four objectives. First of all, a better protection of the environment. Secondly, better protection of human health. Thirdly, uh, flawless single market for chemicals, uh, substances and mixtures. And fourthly, we also try to simplify and to try to reduce regulatory burden. Now, in CLP, you've got different legs. Um, we will focus in this proposal on classification and labeling. First of all, on labeling. Um, one of the most important parts of this targeted revision of CLP is that we will allow to this proposal a broader use of fold-out labels um, without packaging size and shape restrictions, so um, which should indeed facilitate life of industry and of consumers. Secondly, we will also introduce voluntary digital labeling for certain types of information, so that this information could be made available to consumers by industry on a voluntary basis uh, to, uh, for instance, a QR code. Another important element of this revision is that we will try to facilitate the concept of refill sales, because we all know that we have to reduce the packaging and packaging waste. And so therefore, this proposal includes a provision facilitating refill sales, uh, but still protecting the consumers correctly and informing also the consumers correctly in, in cases of refill sales. This part will then reduce, uh, will contribute to reduce uh, to the reduction of packaging and packaging waste. Another element of the uh, labeling part of this targeted amendment is also um, the chemicals sold online, because we all know that many chemicals are being sold online, and therefore what we try to do is that these chemicals which are sold online and which do not meet the le legal requirements that there the suppliers are forced, are obliged to inform the consumers correctly and otherwise than it was done before because the original CLP was done at a time when uh, uh, e-commerce was, was not as widespread as it is now. And we are trying to do this in line with the Digital Services Act and we try to ensure also that there's more compliance with CLP for online sales. Also, um, we tried to introduce an obligation for suppliers to provide chemicals labeled information in distance sales, um, so to ensure that consumers are correctly informed. Now, moving to the classification part of the proposal, um, the first thing that we are trying to do is ensure that endocrine disruptors or long-lasting chemicals in the environment receive special attention, because um, we have all been working very hard on trying to find a solution for endocrine disrupting substances, and with the Delegated Act and with this proposal, we're close to finding a solution. 
So what we try to do on endocrine disruptors and long-lasting chemicals, first of all, uh, the harmonized classification and labeling of these chemicals will be prioritized. So in other words, there should be sooner harmonized classification for these dangerous chemicals. And secondly, uh, and importantly, also the Commission will have the right to develop classification proposals. Now it's still the Member States, but in the future that should be the Commission. And that should also speed up the process of harmonized classification. And harmonized classification is in the interest of businesses, because it's one classification for the entire single market. We also so introduced uh, new rules on the uh, multi-constituent substances, which are similar to the mixture rules, um, which did not exist until now. And there are plenty of other Im improvements that we're trying to achieve and simplifications. I will not uh, enumerate them all because uh, in the interest of time. Finally, what I would like to highlight together with the, because this is a joint responsibility of DG Environment and, and DG Grow in the Commission, is that this proposal is fundamental for the green and digital transition of the chemicals industry. Uh, it will foster the transition and it should also support SMEs so that they can move to more sustainable chemicals. Uh, they are sticks and carrots, but here we try to mix the sticks and the carrots in order to facilitate and encourage this transition. It also, the revision of CLP and this target of revision also lays the foundation for the planned revision of the REACH regulation, which you will receive later this year. Uh, because on the basis of CLP, um, all the hazards are identified, and this is then used for the risk management measures in REACH. To conclude, we hope and we can, that together with you, we can um, have a swift first reading agreement on this legislature, and we're ready to co co cooperate very closely with you on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ingalls. I open KHDI, and now I give the floor to the rapporteur, Mrs. Maria Spiraki from EPP. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, the Commission, for the detailed uh, presentation. As you all know here in uh, our committee, we are calling to revise the classification, labelling and packaging regulation, which, as the Commission has already mentioned, were adopted by 2008, which means that we have uh, the existing regulation which requires manufacturers, importers or downstream users of substances or mixtures to classify, label and package their hazardous chemicals appropriately before placing them on the market. After 15 years, the evidence showed that the regulation should be updated to take account of scientific and technological process and progress and, of course, to take into account the market developments such as the online market and refilling station for chemicals as well as the optimization of labeling rules. The revision is also needed to address the gaps and ensure more complete information about chemical hazards and clarify the roles of different involved parties in the whole value chain, including manufacturers, importers and distributors. Uh, according to the Commission's Delegated Act, which uh, will be adopted, uh, uh, the, the, the Delegated Act introduced the CLP regulation uh, for five new hazard classes and criteria for classifying substances. And I would like just to mention them because it is important to know we are, that we are now in a new reality after the, the update and upgrade of CLP. We have the endocrine disruptors, we have the persistent bioaccumulative and toxics, we have the very persistent and very bioaccumulative, we have persistent mobile and toxic, and we have very persistent and very mobile. During the negotiation, we should take into account that the introduction of this new classification will also entail an expanded workload and consideration for business to redesign, research and develop an identification of substances, also to reformulate. Under my capacity as the rapporteur on behalf of the MV committee, which is the leading committee in this file for the CLP revision, I think that the proposal is a very good basis for discussion. This proposal reflects the experience gained until now and provides legal clarity for several topics. I would like also to put on the table some concerns coming from the stakeholder on the, on the level of the first dialogue we have. First of all is the way that uh, the harmonized classification and labeling for groups of substances will work. It, 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 and it is a question that it is coming from the stakeholder. The second is the multi-constituent substances 
the so-called MOX, which is needed a definition and which will apply both to CLP and REACH. Allow me to, to, to clarify here that CLP and REACH are in a way complementary in this regard. So also, we would like to, to, to make some focus on the specificities of natural complex substances when it comes to, to essential oils, to plant extracts, etc., for their continued use in fragrances consumer products. We receive a lot of concerns coming from Bulgaria, from, from Spain, from France in this regard. The formatic rules for labels and the very important transition period for the change or update of the labels, which is also important to the SMEs, and also the advertisement and distance sales. Allow me also to say that I, I, in, this, uh, in this committee, I would like to assure all colleagues and also the stakeholders that I'm dedicated to, to, to achieve an effective and functioning harmonization for the classification of the new hazards, to establish a level playing field that will ensure the competitiveness of the European chemical industry in DCMEs, to give the appropriate emphasis to inputs, particularly to, to online sales, which is a big problem, pro to provide the more realistic transition periods for the adjustment in the new rules, and of course, to, to, to encourage the research and development uh, investments with existing funding instruments. I would like also to highlight that we have to, to, to introduce the digital la labeling tools to communicate hazard and safe information to consumers. We have to streamline this kind of labeling. The supply chain sector can, uh, in a way, more, more uh, streamlining uh, way of, of labeling. And I'm convincing that expanding the proposal to require digital labeling will allow the EU to make optimal use of digital tools to communicate more complete and up-to-date hazard and safety information to consumer and supply chain actors. Uh, I would like once again to thank you very much for, for, for your attention and just to recall that a lot of provision coming from CLP will immediately cascade down to reach to product-specific EU legislation and will have an impact on the international global harmonized system of classification and labeling from which CLP is derived. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much. Now, coordinators uh, or shadows, five minutes each. I give the floor to Mr. Joao Albuquerque from SND. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, first of all, I, I welcome the, the draft proposal uh, of, uh, of the Commission on, on this legislation. I don't think I need to go into detail on why this matters and, and why chemicals are in almost or virtually everything that we, that we have and why this is so, this is so important. Uh, so the first, the first thing I would like to note is, of course, to, to welcome the, the, the proposal from, from the Commission to, to revise the CLP. Uh, and uh, also to, to welcome the introduction into the CLP of new hazard classes and criteria for endo, endocrine disrupting chemicals. The PBT, the persistent bioaccumulative and toxic chemicals, chemicals that are very persistent and bioaccumulative, VPVB. The persistent mobile toxic chemicals, the PMT, and the chemicals that are very persistent and very mobile. So this is already a, a very good improvement. We are also very happy about the specific provisions to, to ensure consistency between the introduction of new hazard classes in the text and other pieces of, of legislation, of course, such as uh, REACH, Plant Protection Product Legislation and Biocides Products Re Regulation. And this takes me to, to my, first, my first remark, which is in this context uh, uh, the remark that we expect the Commission to deliver on its, on its promises to as soon as possible to come up with a revision of, of REACH. Uh, hopefully still before the summer, which is something that we are very much looking forward. Uh, as regards to the new measures to promote more circular consumption patterns, these are very welcomed as well. Uh, as you know, the sale of products in bulk or the use of refill stations, and I'm, I'm glad to hear the Commission talking about this as well, are very positive elements. But we do need to make sure that all the rules and tight uh, uh, and guarantee safety for, of users by, for instance, providing a label for the reusable bottles in order for the consumers to be always aware what kind of chemical they have inside the bottle or the recipient and what safety measures need to be taken to ensure a safe use of a, give, a given chemical product. There are many other positive elements, such as improved transparency of implementation process, clear inclusion of online sales of chemicals in the scope of the regulation, as well as the extension of the mandate to propose classification of a substance to the European Commission, which is currently only granted to industry and member states. So the possibility to introduce classification proposals for groups of chemicals 
rather than just for individual substances is a great improvement. There are, however, some elements that need to be improved, like the issue of labeling, in particular digital labeling and derogation for small items. Uh, proper referencing of the newly introduced hazard classes throughout the text is also vital to ensure consistency. And there is still a very worrying issue of the length of the classification process, which puts the safety of all EU citizens at risk. Uh, I could not, however, note, not note the, the, the regret that there are no specific hazard criteria for immunotoxic sorry, uh, immunotoxicity and neurotoxicity, which have been added at this point despite clear commitment in the, chemi in the chemical strategy. And regrettably, there is also no wording on a possible future decision of inclusion of such criteria. Uh, uh, finally, uh, we agree that, uh, like the rapporteur also mentioned, that this is a good proposal and a good starting point to modernize the, the EU chemicals legislation. And we really look forward that uh, with the delivery on reach and uh, uh, the commitment of the Commission on, on this matter, that we can continue on the revision on the CLP uh, legislation. Thank you. Thank you very much. From Renew, Mr. Hoysik, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, dear Aurel uh, and um, dear Commission. First of all, big thank you for the presentation and big thank you uh, for uh, bringing out the CLP as a connoisseur of uh, chemical legislation in Europe. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, now, it is indeed an important piece of legislation, the CLP, to ensure the workers and consumers from Bratislava all the way to Athens have the information regarding the chemicals in the product. And I want to stress this because this is, we, we should not confuse the CLP with REACH. CLP is not restricting anything. It's about the information. And I think this is really crucial because we need to make sure that, you know, if me, as someone who uses uh, lots of uh, different oils, uh, get something with the skin synthesizer, that my dermatologist knows what to look for, what is the potential problem. Uh, or when I have an allergy that I avoid that thing, but not limiting the production or use of a certain chemical. Uh, now, it's also to ensure the sufficient protection of employee, employers exposed to chemicals in the workplace, uh, or to protect pregnant women from adverse effect, uh, effects of endocrine disrupting chemicals. Therefore, very clearly welcome the uh, new hazardous classes that would allow coherent identification and risk management of harmful chemicals including in downstream legislation, in cosmetics, toys, food packaging. Now, it's, I think, undue regulatory burden also on the businesses to have so many different pieces on labeling when we have this overarching legislation. And the information really needs to get all the way to the final user, uh, be it professional or individual consumer. Now, we also welcome the steps to increase the overall efficiency of the CLP, uh, by allowing classification proposals for a group of chemicals. I think this is important first step also vis-a-vis -vis the REACH. The question that I have is how are you going to ensure that the grouping approach to hazard classification is a default approach whenever it is possible? And how can we ensure that this provision is not misused to lower the classification? Uh, just trying to say, okay, this particular bit of the group is not fulfilling a criteria of, I don't know, VPVB, uh, the rest has some, and uh, that we sort of say miss things. We need timely action. Uh, but in the past years, what we have observed were really delays between the RAC's publication of its opinion on a CL uh, age proposal and commission decision to add it to the Annex 6. So why did you not put any legal deadlines to the proposal, and how are you going to accelerate the decision-making in the case? Because I think it's going to be an important part in, in the practical terms, so we don't have not just the consumers, but also the businesses don't face a long waiting times of uncertainty. And last but not least, to update uh, the update to reflect the digitization of the society. I think it's important. The proposal says that some information could be moved to digital, except those that are not instrumental for the safety of the user or the protection of the environment. Could you please clarify how the decision is going to be made on the instrumentality and how are you going to ensure transparency of the process? Thank you very much. 
Thank you. No speaker from ID, Mrs. Paulus from Greens. Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you, Commission and colleagues, for everything that has been already said. Um, I think it is really very important that um, the chemical strategy for sustainability should not remain a half orphan for much longer. Now that we have CLP, we, sh we really want to see the other parent reach before the summer, which has been raised also by colleagues already. I would underline the point made by the colleagues on the speediness or rather the lacking speediness of the process because I don't quite understand why the commission takes so long to take for taking a decision because I can understand when scientists say well we need to do some research to form our opinion and to formulate the opinion but then why does the commission decision take so long it's, it's really not understandable for me. Um, on the new hazard classes which were already adopted in the Delegated Act, I take it as granted that it was merely an, an omission by the Commission that these hazard classes are not added throughout the text wherever necessary, um, and this will be fixed as soon as possible because currently in the, um, in the proposal we only see the old hazard classes and no reference to the new ones which were made in the Delegated Act. Um, the the problem of immunotoxicants and neurotoxicants has already been addressed by my colleague from the SND, so I would like to reinforce his call for adding those um, hazard properties as soon as possible. Um, is the Commission still committed to including something on these endpoints and on adding those hazard classes as soon as possible, but surely no later than 2025, because um, we already see that it will probably not be possible before the end of the mandate, but it should be done as soon as possible. On the digital labeling, um, we also would like to see guarantees that it does not lead to um, decreased consumer and worker information um, about the properties of substances they enter in contact with. And I would also be interested in the um, the subclassification, which is really crucial and which were uh, information can be left out of the, a digital label, especially when we're, when we're talking about small items where it is not possible to put everything on the item um, at all. And last but not least, um, I would like to know what are you going, what are your thoughts um, on the developments regarding test methods? We have had the European Citizens Initiative to ban animal testing, where we are not discussing about this today. But surely um, we all aim to have non-animal testing methods in the future as much as possible. But we, this should not be a pretext on delaying classification of um, problematic substances. So I would like to hear the thoughts of the Commission on that and what is the timeline for speeding up the validation and then um, approval of NAMS in this process. Thank you very much. Thank you. No speaker from ECR, no speaker from the left. Catch the eye. Mrs. Arena. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Thank you very much, Chair. I uh, wanted to add to something that my colleague uh, from SND had said. I agree uh, with what he said, with what he said. But the first thing I wanted to say is to come back to what the Commission is doing on the creation of uh, danger classes on immunotoxicity and neurotoxicity. Why is it too? Uh, why can't they these two um, effects on health uh, be included in the same thing? Is the Commission still working on different uh, danger classes for these two impacts? And uh, what are you going to do uh, on that uh, front? The second is that you mentioned the question of the new the new technologies, QR codes, and so on. Uh, I think technology can reinforce a number of things. But I think it's necessary, despite everything, to keep uh, a, a, a sort of, to make sure that uh, information is readable, and to take into consideration the small format of these little uh, labels, and to make sure that in these uh, small formats, technology is uh, is 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 first and foremost. But. Uh, uh, also, the question is, is this uh, another criteria of transparency? 
uh, that we should place into the foreground. Last point is that I liked the position of DG Crow, who said that CLP and Reach are the are the parents, so to say, of our policy on on uh, environmental protection and health protection. I'm completely in agreement with you. Then that's the reason why I think that uh, the the two parents have to. Uh, come forth um, in um, as quickly as possible because otherwise you're going to be a single parent family and I don't want that to happen. I don't want the strategy on uh, on chemicals to be uh, a single parent family. So let's get on with it as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mrs. Dancy, John and Scree, please. Grazie. Thank you very much, Chair. Well, while some chemical substances and some articles can have risks to human uh, health and to the environment, these uh, dangers or hazards are not always properly identified. Uh, this uh, shortcoming in communication of these dangers uh, uh, means that uh, consumers are unable to really make proper informed choices. I think it's very important to to always make sure that labelling is simple and uh, really draws the attention of uh, users to the information concerning risks to consumers. Strengthening digital instruments to make it easy and fast to really have access to uh, good, high-quality information uh, is uh, something uh, that can be done through QR codes. These measures should make it easier for people to understand the impact on the environment and on human health of these products and also foster uh, choices uh, by consumers for uh, healthier or less damaging products. And this is what we need to do. And that uh, it's an opportunity, I think, for our economies too. And also something that can have a possible uh, health and environmental benefit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other requests for the floor? If it's not the case, Mr. Chobano Dorda, please. Thank you very much. I will try to answer in two minutes to a very long list of questions of a very diverse nature. But uh, I will try to group uh, the most important ones. And of course, like the chemical policy, which has uh, two parents, uh, CLP regulation and REACH regulation, these two instruments have two parents in their turn, DG Grow and DG Environment, two services of the uh, Commission. Uh, so, um, uh, as, but as an institution, uh, in response uh, to the question which has been asked about uh, bringing forward the, uh, also the complementary legislative proposal for the revision of the REACH uh, regulation, we can only reiterate uh, the views that and the position that we have expressed in writing uh, before to the uh, uh, Parliament uh, and which was expressed also by uh, Vice President Shevchovic in front of the uh, Parliament, namely that while this uh, a legislative proposal, second legislative proposal is uh, scheduled for adoption by the college in the last quarter of uh, this year. Um, the Commission will do its best to accelerate the uh, finalization of uh, it uh, if this is um, uh, uh, possible. So uh, we want uh, to reassure uh, the members of this uh, committee that uh, we are doing uh, our best. Uh, uh, in order to uh, make this uh, uh, possible. Um, a number of uh, you have uh, uh, raised, and in particular the rapporteur has uh, raised the uh, more delicate uh, issue uh, of the um, uh, so-called MOX, uh, more than one constituent substances, and in particular uh, the problem of the essential uh, oils, which has emerged since uh, a certain uh, period of time as a very sensitive uh, issue, in particular in certain uh, member states. We would like to make clear that 
Already today, essential oils are uh, defined as chemical substances and regulated as such by both the REACH regulation and the uh, CLP uh, regulation. This means that without any amendment uh, to these regulations, lavender oil is subject to the register obligation to register under uh, REACH and uh, it was registered actually uh, with the uh, European Chemicals Agency by its uh, producers. Essential oils have also been subject to labeling requirements and certain essential oils are carrying CLP labels and uh, warnings. Uh, in the upcoming uh, uh, revisions, uh, the Commission has no plans, uh, so this entails also the REACH uh, revision, the Commission has no plans to alter the definition of essential oils as chemical substances, nor to start requiring an analysis of each molecule in essential uh, oils. There are no plans to ban essential oils, such as lavender uh, oils. Uh, but their uh, uh, properties must be clarified and a number of tests must be uh, performed uh, under the uh, existing um, uh, legislation. A number of you have raised uh, the problem of, um, uh, in particular, the neurotoxicity and uh, the immunotoxicants. It's a little bit like the essential oils. These are already covered. Uh, under the current regime. And what the Commission does currently is to look into the merits and uh, the gains uh, that would flow from uh, uh, their detachment from the current, uh, to, from the classes to which they uh, belong and the identification as distinct uh, classes. Uh, you have also, uh, I think Mrs. Uh, MEP uh, Paulus uh, has raised uh, the problem of uh, test methods in relation to non-animal uh, testing. And uh, I think she has made also uh, the point uh, that um, the reduction of, non, uh, the reduction of uh, tests on animals uh, should not uh, prejudge uh, the identification of new hazards. Uh, uh, and we totally uh, agree with uh, this. Uh, the Commission is driven in, uh, was driven when preparing both legislative proposals by the objective of phasing out as much as possible um, 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 animal tests. But at the current development of science and technologies and uh, scientific uh, knowledge, it is not possible to exclude them uh, entirely. Also, the granularity which is given uh, of the results, which is given by non-animal methods, is different, uh, far less precise than the animal uh, tests. So, uh, while we work to phase out animal uh, tests, we are mindful of the fact that in certain circumstances, uh, they need uh, to be uh, preserved. And guided by uh, this paramount preoccupation for phasing out uh, non-animal methods, we are uh, identifying uh, criteria, currently uh, identifying uh, criteria, uh, in order to uh, determine non-animal testing uh, methods uh, that uh, are new and that can be added in the panoply of uh, such uh, instruments. Uh, a number of questions uh, have been raised also about the uh, labeling and online sales and other elements, and I would like to share the burden with the mother of the fa or the father of uh, chemical uh, uh, policy, which is uh, my colleague from DG Grau. Please, but not 10 minutes. Yes, well, I will be very brief in the interest of time. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, on, on digital labeling, um, it's clear that um, here what we try to do is combined uh, two conflicting interests. First of all, this is what we all want, and this is what you're discussing here already, is a proposal on the packaging and packaging waste, where the main ambition is to try to reduce the packaging, not only the size, but also the volume of the packaging that's be, that goes into waste. And so the packaging will be reduced. Another, but there's also another tendency where we try to inform the consumer much more about the substances that are in different types of products and mixtures. And so we try to uh, do this while having, in, in first instance, the interest of the consumers in mind. 
So in other words, there are certain types of information which, in our view, should stay unpacked. First example is a pictogram. I think we all agree that the pictogram is something which is very visible and which informs the consumer immediately about the use of the product. But there are also other things, elements, which we believe should stay unpacked. So here, our uh, approach is overall fairly conservative, so we only propose the supplemental information to be put on the digital labeling, and to ensure that somehow in the future, if things would evolve, we could then um, see whether there are other elements uh, which are not covered by the UN GHS could be, be transferred to, uh, to digital labeling. For the online sales, um, this is a very important item for all of us because we all know that there's a lot of distance sales happening and online sales happening uh, where a number of people simply don't respect uh, the rules on COP. And this creates an unequal level playing field between the businesses that are doing a correct job that classify and label the substances and the mixtures according to the rules and the other ones that don't, but they try to sell from a distance. Um, but we also didn't want to amend the Digital Services Act, which you also adopted fairly recently. So what we tried to do here is to combine and to ensure that all suppliers must make available and must make invisible these pictograms, the warnings, so that consumers know perfectly well when they're buying something online, what the possible hazards of these, these products are. This is something which will also depend very much on market surveillance and enforcement. Um, and therefore, um, this is also covered by the market surveillance regulation uh, on, the, on the which um, CLP um, is, is, is one of the elements. By doing this, we hope um, that somehow everybody on the single market will then apply the CLP correctly and that um, all the information will be available to the consumers correctly because this is where it all counts about. CLP and especially the labeling is in the interest of consumers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, yes, please, Mr. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, for your uh, understanding. Only one uh, minute of intervention just to address another concern that was uh, maybe expressed here by a couple of uh, uh, honorable uh, MEPs uh, who have referred. Uh, to the uh, dovetailing or the interplay and the clarity and legibility of the interplay between the uh, legislative proposal and the delegated uh, regulation. Uh, there is a certain complexity uh, of the chemical legislation in general uh, and uh, we are ready to work with the MEPs uh, which, uh, who believe uh, that uh, legibility can be increased and clarity uh, in order to give also more predictability to the economic operators, for instance, and also to the uh, consumers. Uh, but uh, we would plead that uh, this uh, increase in the legibility uh, does not uh, alter the essential uh, balance uh, of the uh, different uh, provisions uh, in respect of the key uh, aspects which are covered. Thanks a lot. So we are ready to uh, work with you to improve uh, the text. Thanks. Thank you very much for your um, uh, comments. No other interventions. So presentation of the draft report will be on May 4. Deadline for amendments is May uh, 11, uh, 11 hours. Vote in MV September to be confirmed and vote in plenary October to be also uh, confirmed. So is this? Next meeting, uh, Thursday, March 23, which means tomorrow, 9.15. So, thank you very much. Have a good evening.